Hey Bible lovers, I'm Tim Nichols and I'm here to bring you your Worth. and today we're going to be doing part three of my review of the BSB, also known as the Berean Standard Bible, formerly known as the Berean Study Bible. Most times in a more readable translation there's some details that kind of catch my eye and this is no exception and I'm going to show you a couple in this one. First of all, let's go to Genesis chapter 8 and we're going to look at verse number 7. And it says in here that after 40 days Noah opened the window he made in the ark and he sent a raven. And it kept flying back and forth until the waters had dried up, which is fine. But here's where I have the issue. It says, Then Noah sent out a dove to see if the waters had receded from the surface. Now, we know that a raven is an unclean animal, but a dove is generally in the Bible the sign of the Holy Spirit or a sign of intimacy. And the literal word-for-word -word rendering says that he took a dove from himself to imply intimacy, like he had a relationship with the dove, unlike the raven. Now, in the BSB's defense, what they do is they clarify this down in the notes. Okay, and it says that literally sent out from him or sent out from it. So I don't know why they made that choice. I'm not exactly sure why they removed that, but it's not uncommon with more readable translations. They tend to kind of treat things like redundancies when they're not necessarily. I believe the from himself in this text is incredibly important, and I wish they would have left it in there. They would have been one of the only readable translations that had actually left that in there. So, with that said, it's not a big deal. They did put it in the notes, which I haven't noticed that in any of the others, like the NIV and the NASB 2020 and the CSB. Good on them for clarifying that in the notes. I just wish they'd went ahead and moved it on up into the text. One more thing that I want to point out that kind of bugged me about this translation is found in Psalm 55, 17. Okay, and it says, Morning, noon, and night, I cry out in distress, and he hears my voice. Every other translation that I've read that translates Psalm 55, 17, it says, Evening and morning and noontime will I pray. Now, the order in this is incredibly important. If you notice in Genesis chapter 1, it says then evening and morning were the first day. In the Jews, their day starts in the evening. So I understand what they're trying to do here. They're trying to kind of give us in a Western mindset that David is saying, I pray first thing in the day. But I wish they would have went ahead and left this a little more literal. And again, they're the only translation I know of that has done this to try and kind of make it more sense to a Western mind. But I wish they'd have left that alone. I don't know if that was their intent. Maybe I'll get some feedback from them on this video. That's probably what bothers me the most about this one is changing of that order of the day. Just go ahead and leave it alone because that's when the Hebrew day starts. It's in the evening. Evening and morning were the first day. So they would literally start their prayer day in the evening at sundown. Evening and morning and noontime. That is the order of the Hebrew day. Not a big deal, but again, it kind of bugged me. Now, overall, as I've read this translation, a couple of things stand out. Number one, it is very smooth to read, no doubt. Number two is that there's nothing in it that's jarring. There's nothing in it that seems off. There's nothing in it that kind of makes me stop and say, wait a minute, why did they make that choice? Other than a couple of things that I pointed out, which is pretty common in other more dynamic or more readable translations as it is. Another thing that really stood out to me is they worked really hard to preserve the traditional sounds of the poetry, which I think is really important, where they kind of made the poetry readable, where it's not hard to understand, but they also didn't make it so jarring and weird and almost goofy, kind of like the NLT, when you get down toward that paraphrase size and they really lean hard toward understanding what the poetry is saying, and it almost kind of sounds wonky, funny, kind of not believable. That's really not what they said. Like in the NLT, they used the word windbag in reference to Job, and I just don't believe that was the word that they used, but, I'm going to go ahead and read Psalm 23 out of this because I think this gives us the best idea of how this reads and how they tried to keep the real traditional renderings while also going for understanding. So here it is. It says, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the quiet waters. I'm really happy they didn't say, and the Lord provides what I need or I have all I need. I love that they tried to really preserve that traditional rendering, because most of us know what it means, I shall not want, I shall not lack. It goes on, it says, He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for the sake of His name. So a little word order change there, but still very flowy and very pretty. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. And I love how they added the word they there to kind of keep that poetic sound, because it would have been very easy for them to say, your rod and staff comfort me. 
which the they isn't really necessary in English, but it gives it that poetic sound. And it says, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. I love that they put before me there because it still has that beautiful kind of regal sound instead of in front of me or something like that. And it says, you anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That is a beautiful and readable rendering of Psalm chapter 23. Now, as I moved into the prophetic books, right now I am kind of finishing up Ezekiel. And as I'm reading through those, I love that they've kept some of the traditional sounds of the Hebrew poetry as well. So really nice read. I have really enjoyed this so far. So if you're looking for a Bible that's pretty well easy to understand, then I really recommend that you check this one out because it is an outstanding rendering. God bless you. Keep calm. Jesus on. This is your Nicholas Worth.